See, because here, here's the thing, all right? You know, uh, God's omnipotent and all that stuff, and he was there when the Bible was written. In fact, if they're there, you know, he had to, like, give the words to the people who wrote it. You know, I mean, basically he taught them all the truth and their own personalities and the words and everything. But everything that they said is exactly what he wanted said without him forcing them. It's called verbal plenary inspiration. Is that same God is still alive? And if he's God, of course, he's always been alive. Then he knows what words he gave out, doesn't he? Huh? So all those scholars who are fighting over whether it's Calthasomai or Calcasomai or whether whether the, the, the pericope adultere is actually in the Bible or not, well, you see, you can just pick up the phone and call God. Yeah. Hey, Dad, 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 Dad. Is, 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 uh, you know what I'm talking about, that, that, uh, John 1, 1, what is it, 1 John 5, 7. Is that really in the Bible? Oh, no, it's 1 John 5, 8, that's the problem? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, what, what did, did you, did you really commission those three words about, you know, Father and Word and what was it? Spirit, yeah. Did you commission those words? Oh, okay, well, thanks, Dad. See? Real easy. Now. I don't know anything about Greek on my own, but I can pick up the phone and call Dad. Dad? Dad? Dad, Dad, Dad. See, to, here's this, here's this, here's this verse, you know. You know that one about Calcasomai versus Calcasomai? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what I thought, too, because that, you know, I remember that. Yeah, my mom caused me to remember that from Bible class. Yeah, well, it was 20 years ago, but Mom caused me to remember. Yeah, because Mom was alive 6,000 years ago. I would know how Genesis was written, too. Uh-huh. Okay. See, God was there when these words were written. So he knows which words are his and which ones aren't. So you use one down one eye, and then you can learn all the tongues of the Bible. Instead of that other kind of tongues, which is really Satan's tongues, where you roll on the floor... And you think you're speaking a holy language? Yeah, as if the Holy Spirit were a circus clown that makes you roll on the floor and vomit and throw up. And that's what holy is supposed to mean. You know, like the virgin in the tortilla. Yeah. So, see, just like that, that, that fish person. That can level ranks. And therefore, though you occupy a station in the lower human class, with my apologies to Gilbert and Sullivan, if God could make an ass know the Bible, he can make it you know the Bible, too. Even in the original languages, because he was there, and he knows how to put them in your head. Now, you don't just sit down and suddenly know it. You have to actually go through things. You know, like 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 Israel had to do with the Battle of Baraka. They had to train and train and train and train. And then when the day came for the fight... It was already won for them. But you train so that he's got something he can tell you that you can hear and understand. But you use one John 1 9 and you get on the horn all the time. You got that? So don't sit there and tell me, hey, look at me. Do I look like I'm respectable to you? I can learn it. I sin a lot. So I use 1 John 1, 9, and I get under a pastor who knows the Greek and the Hebrew, and he just tells us what it is, line on line, precept on precept. You know, this is a cal imperative, and this is a justive, and oh, by the way, that's an aorist active indicative in the LXX, and I actually know what that means. Yeah. See, it's not hard. If I can learn it, so can you. So that's all I gotta say. My time is up. Now I have to go back to the other monsters.